What's up guys? Today we're going to solve a problem that was posted on an Excel forum that involves parsing data from an HTML string, but we're going to do it in Python. Coming up. If you're like me, you may have started off your career in analysis living in Excel. It's a great tool, but lately Python has gained a lot of traction. Uh, you can use it for data science, you can use it for building games, you can do a lot of different things with it. And so personally, a couple years ago, I started learning Python uh, just because it's an all-purpose language and it could help me do a lot of the things that I'm doing at work, including automation. So if this is something that you're interested in doing, uh, what I want to do today is help you by solving Excel problems that you might be used to solving, but doing it in Python. Everything that I'm doing today, I'm going to be doing in a Jupyter Notebook, and I have a link to the Jupyter Notebook below, so make sure you check that out. Also, if you want, you can subscribe to my GitHub channel where you'll find a repository of all of these tutorials which I'll be posting as I create them. The problem that we're going to be working on today is actually one that I posted a video on already, links below. And what it is, is the user is trying to pull data out of a string of HTML text. And specifically, he's trying to pull the gold word out. Uh, but as I explained in the video before, uh, he, he actually has the ability to, to do a lot more, which you can see in the spreadsheet that I've laid out. And that's what we're going to replicate today in Python. The first thing that I'm going to do is import the library that I need, which is the CSV library. And that's gonna allow me to open and read and also write to a CSV file. The next thing I'm going to do is actually import the file, which is called data.csv, and I'm gonna read it into a data variable. And that data variable is what we're going to be manipulating during this exercise. Next, I'm gonna inspect the first five records just to see what it looks like after the import. And you can see the HTML markup and a couple other characters we're gonna to have to take care of. So. Now we're ready to clean the data. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a clean function um, that's gonna replace uh, several of the things we want to clean up. The reason I'm creating a function is because it's gonna be a recurring exercise and I don't wanna have to recode stuff. The next thing I'm going to do is create a list of cleanup items that I'm going to pass into the function. And I'm gonna pull those from the list above. Then I'm going to write a loop that passes those things into the function. Let's take a look at the records again to see if everything looks good. And it does. The next thing I'm going to do is split each row using the split method. And this is exactly like text to columns in Excel. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the column names, color and fit guide, which you can see and I'm going to do that using the replace function. Let's take a look at the records again to see if everything looks good. And it does. Finally, I'm going to split the middle column into color, finish, and material columns. And since the split function actually creates a list item, I'm going to have to bracket the strings in a list so I can concatenate them uh, with the list that the split function creates. So essentially I'm taking three different lists and putting them all together. If I don't do this, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up with a list inside of a list for each row. Uh, I actually did that while I was doing this and that's not what we want. I'm also gonna remove the leading space in the final column with a strip string method. All right, let's inspect the elements again just to see if we're on track. Oh, looks like I might have had an extra space in the fit guide and it's still not working. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and run the whole thing over again. I think I fixed it, but it's just not going through. This is a nice thing about a Jupyter Notebook is you can actually reset it and run it from the beginning and it will basically run the whole process. So if you have files that you wanna apply the same process to, you just link it to a new file, your entire workflow is saved. It's pretty awesome. All right, now I'm ready to export the data and I'm gonna do that by creating a CSV writer. Now, if you're doing this, make sure you don't forget to put headers if you want headers, and that's gonna have to be written as the first row, and then you're going to loop through 
uh, with a for loop to write the remaining rows in that data set. All right, let's take a look at the file. You can see all the columns are there as expected.